friends, I'm Prairie Vintage. My name is Linda. I'm an energy intuitive reader here on YouTube and I use spirit, my intuition, the tarot to communicate energies to you guys, most amazing, beautiful viewers. I am so thrilled to have you guys here today and I am so thankful that you could join me. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Hopefully you stay and these messages resonate for you. And if you are returning, I am so, so glad to have you back here again. You guys are all very safe and welcome in this space with me today. Today's reading I am doing on the solar eclipse. So this is going to be quite interesting. Um, we're looking at the person on your mind and why has this person been brought into your life? What is the meaning, the purpose? Um, we might have multiple messages coming through. We, will, we might see one main purpose or messaging come through here. Um, we don't know what we're going to see, but we have four options to choose from. So I ask that you put the intention of the person on your mind to come through with these piles. And as usual, sometimes we tap into our own energy, meaning the reason you've been brought into your person's life. If the reading is flipped or reverse, it could mean that that is the message you're needing to hear. Although your person's energy could certainly be in another pile. Okay. So it could be that there is no messaging here for you, and that's absolutely fine. It's whoever's needing to hear this message right here, right now, in regards to the person on their mind. So four options. Option one, we have the Night Sun Tarot. Option one, I will put the timestamp in the description box and in the pinned comment below. It will take you directly to your pick. Option number two, we have the Sugar Skull Tarot. Option three, we have the Shuffle Tarot Collection B. And for option number four, we have the Muse Tarot. Option number four. All right, so one, two, three, four, as laid out. I'll leave the video running for a bit. If the energy does not resonate for you, then go pick another pile. You're not committed or stuck to that pile. And I will see you at your pick. Hello, hello, my most amazing pile one. You guys pick the Night Sun Tarot. Absolutely love this deck. We're looking at why has this person been brought into your life? What's the main reasoning, the purpose behind this person coming into your life? Let's take a look at this. I am recording during the solar eclipse, um, so it should be quite interesting, the energy, as it pulls through. As I mentioned during the intro, if this sounds like flipped reading, meaning maybe why you've brought in, been brought into your person's life, then your person's energy could be in a different pile. So do keep that in mind. Sometimes that's the only messaging we're needing to hear. So, or there's nothing in these piles for you. So take what resonates for you. I've pre-shuffled these Oracle cards. I've not looked at them. And we do have tarot as well. Like I said, the Night Sun tarot. And we'll be reading um, with the tarot after the Oracle cards. So I pre-shuffled the dominoes. We have a domino to look at for the energy with the numerology that comes through. And then we have the oracle cards here. So we have six and three, or I guess three and six. All right, interesting. Three is half of six. It is split. Okay, let's keep going. Now, if you want to get straight away into your reading, you can certainly click on the main reading. Although I do ask you your intuition to tap into these cards as I do the layout, um, because I always ask that you sharpen your intuition. For these readings we have 39 the magic touch you're accessing true magic from deep within oh my goodness number 12 or number three the magic touch all right we have 24 or the number six coming out again a bamboo mushroom with fertility okay six is a divine feminine uh energy with the sorry fertility is giving me divine feminine energy and with the number six it's giving me lovers um gemini energy so i am getting libra taurus and um gemini energy coming through 
All right, so we have Corpse Finder with the Judgment card here. And we also have the Ace of Cups, Fluted Bird's Nest Fungus. Lots of mushrooms coming through. Judgment and the Ace of Cups. Okay. We have Individuality. You leave your unique stamp on of love on everything you do and we have clearing as a true offering arises it becomes easy to let go you start to trust that more will always arrive you shift from mine 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 to god's 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 such freedom beautiful <clears throat> and we have solitude with 45 or the number nine A9 is Hermit, all about solitude. And look, she's reading a book here. She's got glasses. And she's wearing, it looks like a crystal here. Could be an amethyst necklace. So a necklace could be significant as a gift here. Okay, or you guys might wear a crystal necklace. Amethyst might be important. Um, you might like to read. We have a book here or, or lyrics or writing. Poetry. Some of you guys might certainly wear glasses. Uh, take this as um, confirmation here. That's coming through for some of you guys. And we have Transcendence. Beautiful. Feeling Aquarius energy from this one. They look very familiar. Look, and their eyes appear closed. I think she's looking down. But these two, two different tarot packs look very, very similar. Long hair, dark hair, brown hair, it could certainly look like you. Okay, looking down. Mm, okay, <clears throat> take what um, feels comfortable here for you. Yeah, she has her hair parted. You guys might like to part your hair here. We have Surrender Low Self-Esteem with a Beautiful Sunflower. You deserve success, love, and abundance. Set an intention to identify and release any remnants of low self-esteem. And we have trust. I accept that my inner voice will always guide me correctly. We have seventh chakra. The energy of crown chakra supports our feeling of being connected to a higher power and part of a larger whole. Wow. Crown chakra energy. That's quite powerful. All right. We have the heart with wings here. Number 18 or number 9. 9 coming through again, which we were getting hermit energy. So Virgo coming through now. I said Aquarius as well was coming through. And then what do we say? Libra, Taurus, and um, Gemini was coming through for me. Okay. And we have deep knowing with 43 number seven deep knowing more aquarius energy i'm getting i'm also getting pisces energy here with the moon divine feminine energy being pulled through again and we have two to remember your identity you can do it moon energy coming through again divine feminine energy remember your identity and we have angels of strength with Card number 50, Leo energy coming through is giving me the strength in the tarot. Angels of strength, or angel of strength, I should say. Okay. More brown hair coming through. Fourth house, as you did in the past, your home base or your family, do what makes you feel secure. So the fourth house is all about home, roots, family. It's about self-care. It's also about emotions. So the moon pulling through foundations is about mother. So divine feminine energy, children, femininity. Okay. And then we have ascendant with entrance, card 35 or the number eight. Ascendant. Okay, entrance, so self, appearance, I'm getting. Okay, identity, where do we put this? Where should we put this? 
I want to see the numbers there. I will put that there and I will put this here. So beautiful pile number one. Just give me a minute here to sit with this energy. You can skip ahead to the main reading and then I will get into your reading. I don't know if I read this as transcendence, but it's transience. Interesting. Okay. Okay, beautiful pile number one. This is quite a powerful meeting uh, here. I, I feel as though this person has been brought into your life for you to connect to a part of yourself here that has been forgotten. And it is a deeper understanding of why you've been brought here on earth or have chosen to come here to live a life on earth and connect back to your essence of who you are beneath everything that you've created for yourself. So I do feel a very sort of mature energy here with yourself. You might be someone who has been fairly established, someone who is um, well-educated. Maybe you have a lot of life experience under your belt or just you have lived, um, a fulfilling life here in some way okay but but i feel like there's a certain point here where material things and our identity no longer connects to a certain part of our consciousness okay of who we are underneath everything in a material way so i feel like this person's been brought into your life to get you to connect to a certain part of yourself here that has been long forgotten and to detach from a lot of things in your life here that you might have connected to as identifying as self or as a part of what you were needing for happiness or what you have built as part of your identity, connecting to it as who you are, but it is not necessarily who you are. So you're needing to trust in yourself, in the universe, and in the detaching of possessions and detaching of identifications of who you might have created here in this earthly plane, who you've said that you have been, in order for you to really deeply connect with your self uh, on a conscious level here okay before all of these sort of experiences and what you've identified with and all of the, these material attachments have happened so i feel with the seventh chakra there's a very spiritual part of you here that might have been dormant that i feel you were unable to connect with or just have not been able to connect with previous to this person being in your life. And it could mean that this person has been brought into your life for you to tap into your ability to connect with the divine here, okay? Like really be able to connect with the divine and, and tap into unworldly information and get downloads and receive spiritual guidance and the spiritual side of who you are and your spirit rather than the material things that what's going on in front of you. So there's a unique energy underneath all of this uh, about who you are that I feel has been molded throughout your life because I feel you've been adapting to your situation and your experiences and you've been pretty adaptable here to your life but I feel like underneath that is an authentic individual that has been lost is a unique person here okay underneath it all that I feel has been 
shoved down or suppressed or you haven't been able to allow this being yourself your conscious self to kind of come out and to be free and to be yourself because i i feel like you've been conditioned and you've been experiencing a self here that has been produced by your environment and by your experiences so I feel for a lot of you guys, meeting this person has really made you think about your whole life, about your purpose, about what you want for yourself, about your future, about how you see yourself, about where you want to go, and specifically also to start over in a certain part of your life because I feel like your heart has potentially been closed and so with this heart with wings, I feel as though this is a certain liberation, a freedom of heart, like heart consciousness, loving from a heart space that isn't based on certain conditions and based on certain understandings. This is like a free heart space that loves unconditionally. So you're learning about unconditional love. Potentially you have a lot of unconditional love for this person or have recognized a different way that you can love another here. And self-love, how to love self. I feel with, with the number nine here and the number nine here with the hermit coming out, there's been a lot of self-reflection and you working with spirits, I feel, for the most part in this journey. So I don't know how much involvement this person has been directly engaged here um, other than this person cracking open a part of you that has really pulled inwards to really reflect on who you are how you love, what you want for yourself, how you view yourself, how you connect with spirits, how spiritual you are and how authentic you might be in your trueness, how maybe certain ways of you being have diminished a certain part of your life, you know, or your light, I should say. Like I feel there's a light within you that might have been suppressed here, okay? And I do feel as though by releasing a lot of things that were not allowing your light to shine. More and more of your true authentic self comes out. And so I feel like there are lessons here in learning self-worth with this person. Learning how to respect yourself in a way here that uh, builds your self-confidence. But I feel like it's really connecting back to a familiar part of yourself here. And for a lot of you guys, it could be even tapping into psychic abilities here that have been lost along the way. But I do feel as though you guys have established some sort of family structure. You guys might be, like I said, I feel a mature energy here. And it could be that you guys were pretty comfortable or at least established here and maybe, I don't know, coasting is coming through or just like established. So maybe releasing any need for anything further or complacency in what you've accomplished in some way here. So I feel like this person was brought in here to push you into creating something here, okay? Like, I don't know what creation this is, but I feel like it's now you creating something in your life that you wouldn't have tapped into here that you wouldn't dream possible that you could create had you not been introduced to this person or met this person although it is independent of this person i feel and for a lot of you guys you could lean in on a lot of your abilities here that are coming in from the divine psychic gifts or just being able to tap into another sort of energy here that feeds you what you need in order to create. And so I feel like this creation is a next phase of your life. Yeah, a next phase of your life. So I, I feel like there's this part of you that has been either suppressed or not explored as something quite magical. Like it really is an ability here to, I don't know, like maybe 
fortune tell or, or connect to a psychic ability or to be able to understand certain things here that comes through. And so you've certainly been able to strengthen your intuition, your connection again to spirit and your trust of self and your inner compass. And I feel like self-love has been the biggest sort of thing, like understanding your own self-worth, self-love, self-acceptance and being comfortable with who you are and what you are about here, despite having everything that you might have already in your life. It's like remove everything you've told yourself that you are or that you've been doing and underneath all that, who are you and can you be proud of that person? And I feel like this is something that this person is bringing to your awareness because I feel like you've had to adapt to a lot of external situations here that I feel like the true core of who you are has been suppressed or just put off on the side here. So this is about self this is about being your true raw self here and detaching from a lot of things that you might have clung on to here that that gave you a, a false sense of who you are or what you needed in order to be of value i feel like there might have been a lot of triggering here of uh, cer certain things that might have caused you to face certain fears and maybe still being facing fears because i feel like we might have to face certain things when it comes to detaching, which you might still be in the process of. And really learning the lesson of trusting the universe that, that, that um, we can let go and we can allow the universe to sort of guide us in a way here that we don't need to hang on to things because it was, and when I say things it could be anything from jobs relationships material possessions identities I am a, a wife I am a mother I am a, all of these things that I've experienced in my life and so I identify as these things but as these things start to drop off as these things are just experiences we've had in our life we have an identity beyond this and so who is this person beyond the mother? You know, who is this person beyond the wife? Who is this person beyond this experience that we've had? And so there is a need to really tap into this part here, but I feel like you're very wise. Like I feel like uh, at least with this person coming through as someone who's seeing you as someone who is wise and very well experienced in life. And so I feel like this understanding, this logic is coming through as someone who, you know, you might have had to rely on a lot of your understanding logically, a lot of your experience and your wisdom, but a, a big part of spirit and sort of magical energy that's coming through here from being in touch with the divine and unworldly things defies logic. So how do we reconcile the two? Because I, I feel like you are of logical mind. So I'm feeling very heavy Gemini, Libra, Aquarius coming through. Okay. Um, because I feel like this person's triggered you to go into your emotions to really wake you up in some way. And, and I feel this is triggering, like I said, like unconditional love from the heart space, setting your heart free for self as well. Like feeling unconditional love for self, feeling what does unconditional love look like you know um which is is quite an experience here and and leveling up as a spirit as a soul leveling up and really allowing yourself to feel your emotions here despite maybe there's been a little bit of fear when it comes to really tapping into certain parts or allowing yourself to let go um, of certain things so you could feel you know, with the emotions, but I feel like there could have been some fear, you know, in trusting. I feel it is trusting yourself to let go, trusting yourself to feel because I feel like you've erred on the side of logic or you always chose an experience or you chose to do what sort of mentally maybe made a lot more sense. And so this person has been brought into your life to say, there are other things despite what we mentally logically know that could also be true 
that emotions are just as, as true to tap into. So you might have been fighting deep emotions or unable to tap into certain emotions of self. So there's been a lot of, I feel, clearing of chakras. Clearing, and I feel like the crystal here, clearing of chakras, specifically when it comes to the heart chakra. So there might have been a lot of heart chakra blocks, which is just the inability to tap into that certain part of our heart that's been closed off, you know, that we default to mind, we default to an experience, we default to an understanding rather than we default to saying, I'm going to be led by my heart here, although it might defy logic, I'm going to trust my inner guidance and voice, I'm going to trust myself to make decisions based on my heart, despite maybe feeling like maybe I could get hurt or that this could lead me to pain, but yeah, being very in tune with this. And it, it's opening up the divine feminine energy within you. Because I do feel a, a very soft divine feminine energy here. But I feel like you've been disconnected potentially from this. You know, ability to tap into the divine feminine. Which is being able to be receptive with the moon energy here. But this is like emotions and the creative side here. That allows you to kind of get lost in the... I feel Pisces energy as well. But I feel like this is inspiring you to create something here in your life. Like, I feel like since meeting this person, or at least it's showing here, whether this has happened yet or not, there's a, an inspiration and a desire to create something. So I do feel like you're going to create something that you're passionate about, something that speaks to you, something that makes you feel, you know, and I might make no sense of it at this point in time, but it's something that you can really align yourself too so i do feel this person inspires you to create this thing you know so i feel like this person has made you be able to give to self like i feel like you might have been very much outward like i don't know if this is more masculine energy or how to explain this so much as working with others, showing up for others, being in an energy of where others can work with you, where you can show up and exert energy and be very cooperative, collaborative. Um, and now I feel like there's this multifaceted energy about you, like you've gone inwards to really put yourself on a level of others as well. Like you can equally have a voice, you can equally be as weighted or regarded like your opinion could be equally as weighted and regarded as those that you worked with to carry weight now you know like I feel like the inside is now being worked upon as much as the outside because I feel like there was a lot to focus on outside like how you would engage with others or how you would create with others or what the outer world would would deliver to you and you'd have to adapt. And now it's like the outer world has to adapt to parts of me that I want to see in my outer world, you know, or that are true to my inner self that now reflect on the outside of me. I feel like you're finding balance outside and inside masculine, feminine energy, but mostly I feel it's not a distorted feminine energy. It's a feminine energy here that is not suppressing a certain part so that's kind of what i feel like i do again like whether you're born feminine or not i don't know but there's a we all have feminine masculine energy and we could be distorted feminine or distorted masculine i feel like there was a a tweaking of a feminine energy that you might have been in that was trying to adapt with your life and it wasn't a full healthy sort of divine feminine energy here okay because it was denying or suppressing a certain part of you and so i feel like now we're unapologetic unapologetically our divine feminine energy able to request from the world and from the people around us what we need what we want and to have that sort of be created around us rather than us have having to adapt to other people in situations to be that of which they're wanting us to be so there's lots of balance here, I feel, coming through now, or at least this is why this person has been brought into your life, whether you've reached that state or not, I don't know. We're going to pull some tarot to see if we could get a deeper layer. This is a very beautiful reading and um, lots of layers coming through here for sure. So 
Spirits, clear a concise message here for the greatest and highest good of beautiful pile one. Why has the person on their mind been brought into pile number one's life? What was the significance, the purpose of pile one's person being brought into pile one's life? Please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message for the greatest and highest good of pile one. I'm so blessed. Thank you so much, Spirit, for this beautiful message right here, right now. Please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message. And thank you so much, Pile One, for allowing me to tap into your energy, the energy around you at this time. I'm so blessed, so grateful. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support on this channel. All right, so what do we have? Eight Swords. And under that, we have Ten Swords in reverse. Okay, so let's just reveal all these cards here. We have Seven of Pentacles in reverse. We have Queen of Swords. Yes, certainly feeling Gemini, Libra, Aquarius energy. You're, you're coming through as someone very wise here, okay? But maybe you're very much mind over heart, like very much leaning in your experience, your understanding, your wisdom, your logic. Lots of air energy coming through here. And, and air en energy is masculine energy. So I feel like there was a need to pull in the feminine energy. Okay, and I was feeling Pisces at one point here, which is a very much water energy. So we have six of swords in reverse. Excuse me. And we have the five of pentacles in reverse. We have the emperor in reverse. And we have the three of pentacles, which I was kind of getting from the three here, working with others, you know, how you show up, how you collaborate and, and work with others, being external, being able to be available and adapt to external situations so you could be easy to work with. So I have Aries energy. And then, like I said, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius coming through. What's under that? We have five wands and four cups under that. Okay, so... I feel like with the pentacles coming through here, I, I feel like this has really impacted your practical world or about to, okay? Like this person coming into your world is, is someone that's making you see that practical things, you know, like what we've created for ourselves, where we live, our relationships, what we have, ownership, our identity, and all this type of stuff. It doesn't bring the happiness here that touches a place in our hearts. And, and, and I feel like, there was a need to tap into self from a deeper sort of understanding rather than just um, what was going on around you in a practical way here. So I feel like there was maybe, um, I don't know, like uh, I'm feeling a lack of fulfillment here, okay? A lack of fulfillment and maybe a part of you was like, creating what it was that you were wanting to see but like from a place of doership like you know what this emperor here is like identifying as I am sort of the creator of what I'm creating here and, and I take order and I create things that I want to see and that I have to take charge and, and certain take action of certain things and of course we have to take action in our own life but as we tap into a more spiritual side of ourselves and connect to spirit and our authenticity coming from a place of allowing this trueness to kind of come out, that's not, we cannot force, we cannot sort of um, create it because it's already created. We just have to let it kind of shine. So I feel like there was a need for a balance of not having to push so hard, I guess, in, in creating um, your environment more than releasing all the things that were in your life that were creating your lifestyle, okay? Like letting go of the wheel, like letting go of having to control, letting go of having to create order in your life so much here and having to like uh, adjust to your outer circumstances in your practical world here to make things happen so other people could be happy so you could create and 
I feel like it was difficult for you and might still be difficult for you to get out of this energy, for you to trust in spirit, for you to trust in letting go so that magic can happen in your world from just a place of allowing things to sort of manifest and unfold without you having to be sort of the emperor, which is the doer of that action. You know, like I feel like there were some beliefs that you had with the eight swords and you might still have that were very much limiting. And so since you're a mind person, I feel here with air, it's like telling yourself that if you don't take action or make it happen, it's like, then it can't come or that I can't attain or that I'll never find the happiness. So it's like, I got to chase the happiness or I got to, it's a lot of external energy. Whereas now I feel you're more in a, a receptive energy. Like we don't have to chase or do or pursue or order or instruct or find or adapt outwardly. We're now receptive, open, and more in tune with a certain silence part of ourselves that understands an authenticity that has to manifest and form in front of us and trusting that it will and trusting that the divine's going to bring this, you know, um, because I feel like this is a big lesson here for you. So I feel like you're still releasing certain parts in your life here with 10 swords. And it's a painful, painful process, okay? Because I feel like we have to face certain fears. We have to let go of certain things. And we have to know when we should be moving forward in certain parts of our life when we need to be emperor. But I feel like the energy has been you. I, I do feel a divine feminine energy, although emperor is divine masculine here. You being divine feminine, but being in a sort of more doer energy, masculine energy of working with the energy you're in, but having to really create order and structure and come out, you know, like it's exhausting. Well, I feel it's very exhausting. And I feel like it, it might've been a mindset here that you believe that you had to be in this in order to create happiness or in order for things to happen to you that you want, you know, or in order for there to be things in front of you or to work with people like you have to sort of step out and, and externally put out put this energy but I feel like the lesson here is sometimes people should be kind of coming to you and to adapt to you and and your open receptive energy can also create beautiful things here that can also work and create you know and so I feel like there's been a lesson in maybe us you know like externally putting out there what we can so that we feel worthy with the self-esteem it's like having to prove ourselves and maybe to others or just prove ourselves to ourselves. like i can create because i'm able to attain like this to me is like confidence order structure making it happen and it's like tiring when we're always in this energy where we can't just say I can allow the universe and other people to come to me and other things to sort of um, adapt to me, you know, because we might require some work on our own self-worth and our own self-esteem to be confident enough that things will still happen, that other people would be drawn to us and that other people would still want to work with us and that situations would still kind of get along without us having to dominate or get in there or be assertive or make happen. Okay, so yeah, it's about how you engage with the world, I feel, and how you're perceived by the world and by yourself, you know, and, and tuning more into someone who's pulled back in some way but it's pulled back into like hermits like really understanding self being confident in your skin and your energy and saying I don't have to constantly be doing or showing up to be true and authentic and that I could still be in this world authentic and true by not completely being like exerting energy you know 24 7 you know having to prove how much I know or through my experience or how much I can contribute um you know, by, I don't know, speaking, doing, saying what I know or understand or bringing a perception to situations. It's like I could just be and find balance. Yeah, balance between those two worlds. 
Okay, so this is what I have, pile one. This one's a very interesting energy. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to be as long as it was, to be honest with you, but it, I could probably go again um, <laughs> here, but I got to know when to kind of call it quits. I, I do feel like this is a, quite a significant person, you know, on your mind that has made this change, but it's all about self. And so it's beautiful because relationships do bring a mirror to ourselves so we can see ourselves maybe for the first time certain aspects depending on that person's reflection back to us so i feel like this is the first person potentially that has reflected this back to you you know that's i feel is going to free you like eight swords is very restricting and i feel like your heart might have felt very restricted or confined and i feel like the heart space is is open and maybe it's like you can accept that you can love and um do whatever you sort of want without having to conform you know to what it is you're supposed to love or supposed to do or how you're supposed to show up it's like if i love this and i want to feel this i'm going to allow myself to do this you know from a heart space here and accept this about me accept this and it's beautiful it's very authentic all right pile number one and this is what i have for you guys i hope this resonated i will see you soon bye hello hello my most amazing beautiful pile number two you picked the sugar skull tarot deck and i cannot wait to get into your reading i'm recording during the solar eclipse so the energy is quite charged and i absolutely love it what are we looking at well the person on your mind and why have they been brought into your life what is the sole purpose here of this person being brought into your life and like I said during the intro, it could certainly be that we're tapping into our own energy, meaning why you've been brought into this person's life. So if that's the case, you can crisscross the energy um, and your person's energy could certainly be in another pile or it might just be the message we're needing to hear. OK, so use your own intuition. We will be laying out the cards. And during this point, I do ask you use your intuition, what you will see, feel or hear to determine whether this messaging is for you and then um, we will get into the intuitive part which is your main reading if you feel as though you want to get straight away to your reading you can click on the main reading there and if it doesn't resonate for you you can go check out another pile okay so what do i have a domino five and two interesting okay we're gonna lay everything out and see what we get so we have 24 authentic expression be true to who you really are and your life will change in the most amazing ways Okay, 16 with a manita, expanded awareness. I am feeling conflict in your life before maybe meeting this person, okay? Having to find, to get grounded, I feel here. Maybe there's toxic things going on here in your life. Seven of cups, seven cups. Lots of mushroom energy, and we have five swords. Yeah, five here. Okay, five swords. Creativity, you love to devise new ideas, innovations, and forms of illumination. Creativity and self-expression, that's beautiful. Detachment, with detachment, you finally feel whole inside, with or without the fulfillment of a particular desire. Ironically, that's often when it's fulfilled. Beautiful. And we have 36 tears. Oh my goodness, I don't think I've ever seen this. What's interesting is there's a face facing down and a face facing up. Mouth, nose, eyes. I don't think I've ever seen this. And then we have a palace here. It's giving me very fantasy-like, the moon. Lots of feathers. Tears, okay. And we have message from afar. I don't think I've ever seen this one either. Wow, message from afar. Beautiful energy in this card. And we have surrender to the wisdom of your body. Listen to your body's messages about a person or situation. If you feel physically drained or uncomfortable, be cautious. If you are energized and happy, move forward. Love. I commit to the practice of seeing the good in all things. And we have union. 4-4. Four, four. Wow. 4-4 four, four is a master number. It's about integrity as a foundation. Treating the earth as home and a temple and its manifestation and leadership. It says the energy of union activates our ability to unite our outer and our inner aspects towards a state of wholeness. 
And we have the graveyard here, number 43. 43 could be significant. Or the number seven. Seven's coming out twice here. With the 16. Okay, seven is about faith, wisdom, reflection, understanding. It, it could be the chariot in the tarot, which is about being victorious and integrating shadow. Finding balance, yang, divine masculine energy with number one. I'm feeling Aries energy coming through. I'm also feeling Leo energy coming through here. And we have divine order, 2-2, two, two, practice patience. All right, so where do we put that? Let's put that right here. And we have 49 with angel of love. Yes, 13. 13 is transition. Scorpio energy, death energy. And we have the first house. Who you are your desires, and your actions. The first house is all about our, our appearance, beginnings, the body, your first impressions. Yes, it's about how we identify and how we approach life. It's our attitude. Okay, yeah, it's all about the self. Okay, and then we also have Venus with Beloved 21 or the number three. Venus is the ruling planet for Taurus and Libra. Okay, so I'm going to squish these a little here because i don't know that i have a whole bunch of room hopefully you guys can see that let me see beautiful okay so you can skip ahead to your main reading i'm going to tap into this energy here and see what i see Beautiful pile number two. I do feel a divine masculine energy coming through here. Okay, uh, uh, you. And why this person has been brought into your life. So you don't have to be born male. I just feel divine masculine energy. as confirmation for some of you guys who are identifying as that being your predominant energy. I feel as though your life's been... A little bit difficult here you know like kind of like having to suffer and tough it through like i do feel like you've been harsh on yourself or life has been harsh on you you know and maybe you've been accepting certain things in your life here that aren't very supportive or healthy you know like physically on your body so we could be battling addictions or doing things here that maybe don't feel very good or don't really reflect us and not living for a greatest sort of purpose and feeling like a certain part of ourself might want more or could do more, could be more, but never really stepping into or leaning into this energy. And so I feel like you might have been a little aimless and I do feel as though you might have been, um, yeah, just lots of challenges here. You know, people around you, maybe that didn't want to see the best thing for you so it could have caused a lot of conflict like people friends maybe other relationships here that were more self-serving or just i don't feel as though you've been engaged with people or situations or circumstances that support your growth in a positive way you know and so i guess it perpetuated maybe more of the same like hanging out with the same types of people that would maybe be in the same energy you're in so it, it's it's a lifestyle here that I feel has been one that you've known and understood, but I, I feel like having known this person or this person coming into your life is to get more pointed and more direct about what you want for self, but in a more like, I don't know, positive pointed way, like to aim a little higher here, but also to be able to express yourself in a way that is more aligned with who you truly are underneath because i feel as though through suppressing yourself with i don't know it could be substances could be toxic relationships could be friends that have just been kind of filling the void here um 
you're now seeing uh, these things as not the greatest reflection of what you want in your life. Like you now are aware that you deserve more, that there's more to you than just sort of, I don't know, hanging out or doing things here that might have been filling the void at some point. Like I feel like you can see a potential future maybe for once and that you're capable of, of building it. But I feel like at a certain point, and it could still be during this um, journey, that you might feel very heavy because I, I feel like bringing this into your awareness also brings a sadness that maybe you have been sacrificing a part of yourself or ignoring a part of yourself. So I feel it comes with a heaviness here, like, you know, like seeing that like you gave up on yourself or like you, you, you let yourself down or that, I don't know, like you're just saying like, wow, like I could have been more respecting myself in a way that would have brought me further or that I could have attained more for myself that I wanted, not necessarily just, I don't know, like wasting time or like living other, other people's sort of energy or, or lowering my own standard or my own way of life in order to just make do or make, you know pass time by yeah so so i feel like you're understanding that there are good people out there like i, I really feel like this person wants the best for you and i feel like you're seeing that as reflecting back to you for wanting the best for yourself and really asking yourself, like, what's healthy for me? What relationships are healthy for me? Who actually has my best interest in mind? And who do I need to release? And what do I want to see for myself for the future? And I feel there's a process of grieving, you know, but also taking charge. Like, I feel like you haven't been able to or not to really felt the desire to or just incapable at that time because of what was going on to make things happen in your life. Take charge. Like really do things here that would reflect back to you who you are and feel empowered by taking charge like you know like you're really believing in yourself to make things happen is what I feel here like so this would require you to put parts of yourself behind and and detach and let go of certain relationships so I feel like this person in your life is for the better but I feel like during the transition, it might be very difficult because when we release and when we start to move forward, we start to maybe get really in tune with where we're at. And, and so we start to panic in some way here because I feel like maybe we're not quite sure how to get grounded. We're still not quite sure how to balance ourselves. So I feel there's an imbalance here in your energy. Okay, and you might still be moving through how to get grounded, powered, or sorry, empowered and and find balance. And so I feel like the inner world is having to match the outer world, but I feel like the outer world was kind of chaotic and very much not reflective of who you are inside, like your full potential. And so we have to discover who we are on the inside in order for us to tap into this so that the outside could sort of reflect this. So I feel like there's a need to get grounded, you know, like I feel like you were probably not very grounded and maybe you were very much I don't know, like, I feel like kind of floundering here, you know, maybe going with the flow, not quite sure what you wanted, dabbling in all sorts of sort of things here, I feel. Um, and so I feel like this person has been brought into your life to see who you truly are here so you can fall in love with yourself and love yourself enough for you to make changes in your life i feel like you feel very blessed by this person or that this person has been a blessing to you and that you feel like this person could support you or, or provide you with some softness here for you to make changes in some way but i feel like it, it might be very difficult to make first steps or to acknowledge or to get there like i feel like the journey to get there seems like it's been difficult or to yeah like it's been difficult. It almost seemed like something that could not happen for you or it was too far away or too much work or too distant, you know, so maybe you gave up on this dream or this vision of yourself for the future because it just wasn't happening for you or everything else seemed easier or your situation circumstances just sort of aligned with this other part. 
I do feel as though this person coming into your life has made you see completely different um, about yourself, but also now your ability to what you can create in this world, like your power. I feel like you're identifying your power, what you can actually create, like you actually have power. Because I feel like before knowing this person, maybe you felt at the mercy of others and what was going on around you and that was the best it could get or that the universe and that your circumstances were kind of happening and you had to kind of make do and now it's like i can actually create the future i want to see you know i can actually engage energy towards this by releasing what's not working what doesn't align what doesn't serve me what doesn't reflect me I feel like your environment wasn't reflecting you. I feel like your people weren't reflecting you. Your actions weren't reflecting who you truly are. And so I feel it made you feel bad about yourself or it made you just feel like maybe you just thought you deserved to suffer or you deserve to be in unhealthy relationships or to be stuck with unhealthy things here in your life, you know, drinking substances, like partying or just like an energy here of not getting your life in order. And it caused challenges. So it could have been you self-sabotaging self, like not knowing how to break out of certain addictions or listen to your greater self. So I feel like this person makes you want to be healthy, like better for you, like be more in tune with what's best for you, what's going to make you feel healthy and, and, and strong and capable and, and beautiful. And I feel like there's this very soft love coming from your person here okay like I, I feel like maybe I don't know like soft love has been missing from your life maybe it's been like dog eat dog world or mm, I don't know like someone who could unconditionally or be very soft with you or, or accepting or like forgiving accepting safe soft allowing I feel like there's an allowing here you know And, and so I feel like it makes you want to do, like it makes you want to push yourself in some way here. But I feel like certain things are requiring you to really break out of unhealthy things that might be difficult habits and addictions and challenges, you know. So I feel like you've had to learn to be patient with self. And I feel like maybe this person has had to be patient with you or you feel like this person maybe has had to learn a lot of patience because where you were at like I feel like you see yourself as someone who is really behind or not quite there yet so what you had to do here was a lot of work and you might still feel like there's a lot of work here and like you just felt like this person was on another level of self that I, I feel it motivated you like you could see this person I don't know like living their best life or doing something here that uh, I feel inspired you to to also be the best version of you in some way here but having to accept yourself from where you were at like and not just see this person as oh this person is just way too established or too good for me or too much in an energy that I will never attain or get to it's like going through the process of accepting here's where I'm at Here's what I've experienced and that's okay and, and grieving certain parts and having to do the process in order to be patient with self to make the steps necessary to get better or to progress. So I feel like you're in the process of this, like making steps, you know, and I feel like you're getting more balanced every day. And, and I feel like this is really learning love of yourself and learning that you could have love of another being given to you that isn't counting on or relying on what you're outputting like i feel like this is like when we say unconditional love like this is a safe place to love you past your bad habits you know or someone who loves you beyond your self-sabotage ways or your way of maybe being I don't know, like combative in some way, or there's like a challenging energy about you, you know, but I think this person's kind of sees beyond or past. I feel like you want to be more like for yourself, but also to give more in the situation. 
I, I feel like you've been tapped into a divine part of yourself or at least acknowledge that you can have a divine part of yourself too. Like, despite how you've been engaged in the world that you have like a, a divine part within you that could be more. So I, I see that you see your awareness, um, or I, I, sorry, I, I see here you're more aware of uh, certain parts of yourself that maybe you weren't aware of in the past, that there's a greatness, you know, that's there too, despite everything else. Like, because I feel like there's a lot of energy that overshadowed a part of you that always existed, like the part of you that was divine, a part of you that is the part I think you're connecting to right now, you know, to be more and to have more for self and to love self and to be someone you, you want to be that you might have not have felt you could be or attain to be, you know. And I feel like it feels good to have that as an, a North Star or an aim because I don't feel you're there yet, but I feel like you now have an aim. So it doesn't feel like it's burning your life or wasting your life or I don't know. Cause I felt like before it was like, what's it worth? Or it's not attaining to something or it just, yeah, it wasn't bringing a fulfillment. And so now it's like, I have something to strive for. I have something to aim for attain, you know, and that, although it does seem like it might be a long journey and a long battle and I have to show patience and I have to, release a lot of parts of me and I have to grieve a lot of parts of detaching. I have to accept a lot of parts. I have to go through a big process, which I wasn't willing to do in the past or never really had a desire to because there wasn't a feeling that I, I was motivated or, or could see that that would be something. And now it's like, there's a reason to do this. And I don't know if this person's made you see that in self or that this person is a reason you're wanting to do this, you know? I don't know, maybe there was a lot of concern about having to be accepted, you know, or at least, I don't know what I'm getting exactly, like maybe you didn't care so much about fitting in so much, or you didn't fit in so it became not so important in some way, but now it's like I do care about the people I love and being accepted in some way, or that my outer world is a reflection in some way of what I value, you know, like maybe you were so defying, I don't know, like external things here that it's like, it doesn't care. I don't care what people think. And I don't really, it doesn't matter to me, like all these things that don't matter, you know, which is good at a certain point. But when the external starts to reflect that we are not even caring about self so much or we're engaged in self-destructive things, it's like we now want to appear on the outside in a way that's like, I want to respect myself. I want to be per perceived as someone here who is loving, you know, or who is in control of my future in some way or I can make things happen in my life that I'm not just giving up on myself. Like we could see the sun for the first time in certain parts that I think you let go or that you uh, resign the fact that it would never, you would never be that or it would never come or that you could care less if it happened or not. Like I feel like there's certain parts of you that you let go of in a way that you felt you felt you could never be that or attain that, you know, but now I feel like there's hope you see the light, like you see, yeah, you see the light coming from things you've given up on self about there's hope there, the sun is starting to rise. It's like, ah, like I, I could see the sun here, you know, but, but I feel like there is a need to release a lot of things that were not good about self. And, and I feel like it's physical things, habits and actions and people and that, but also parts within self that were sabotage and And so I feel like you might have a challenge prioritizing things in your life with the seven cups here. I'm getting two pentacles here. I'm definitely getting five swords. You know, challenges, conflicts, even internal conflicts, like having to find balance, like life's been topsy-turvy. Maybe things haven't been fair for you. People haven't been fair. 
And so I do feel as though this person is opening up a part of you that can express a certain side that's been dormant, suppressed, or that you refuse to want to see or that you thought you had within you anymore. So this also brings excitement because it brings a new possibility, you know, a new future here. You see yourself differently is what I feel, or at least this is why they've been brought into your life. So you could see yourself differently. So we're going to ask Spirit for a clear and concise message here for the greatest and highest good of beautiful pile number two. Spirits, for pile number two, the person on their mind, why has this person been brought into their life? What is the main purpose? What is the reasoning for pile number two's person being brought into pile two's life? Clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good. Please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message. Thank you so, so much for this message. We are so blessed. And thank you so much, pile number two, for allowing me to tap into your energy, the energy around you at this time. I'm truly blessed. Thank you so, so much. All right. So bottom of the deck, two wands. We're getting two. I was getting two pentacles from here. Twos are all about choices, duality. Okay, two wands is making a decision here and... and the two wands represent one part of us, which is staying in the same, you know, it, it's easier to sort of choose the path we know. And the other wand is choosing a different life for ourselves that might be more difficult, but it's kind of our dharma. It's the path of our calling or destiny, you know, but we have to make changes in order to go down that path. So I feel like maybe you're at a crossroads, you know, like, can I step into this other version of me? Can I make all these changes in my life here. I feel like with the message from afar and this map here, maybe there's distance between you and your person, or maybe you just feel very far from where you need to be. I see the star, which is Aquarius. This is also our distant hopes and desires. Healing energy. We have 10 pentacles in reverse. I'm going to flip them all before I start to read. We have two pentacles. Yeah, that's certainly what I was feeling here. And we have four cups. And we have the page of pentacles. We have the fool. And we have the hangman in reverse. Okay, so pile two. I feel as though it is difficult going from the place where you're at here. Because I feel like, I don't feel you had stability around you you know like maybe people around you had homes had full-time jobs just already family stable secure like I felt like you're floundering is what I feel and, and maybe by choice okay like there was no real reason potentially but I feel like there was no real aim because it was like what were we building for self like what sort of future did we want for ourselves like were we always going to be just floundering or open like I feel like you're the type of person that still would want some sort of stability for self in the future, you know, and maybe this person made you think about the future because maybe there was no need to think about future. Maybe we're growing up here and, and having to make decisions. So I feel like this person has opened this up, like page of pentacles. This is now being curious about exploring a new aspect of self that we never looked at, you know, like finally saying, hey, like I could begin getting more stable, you know, going from this page of pentacles, one pentacle to 10 pentacles, like leaving behind a legacy, a family, a structure, something that I've built that's stable and reliable and secure, because I feel like you weren't very solid in some way, you know? So it's like, how do I become that person? You know, I could start today. It's like, I could start to build this. I feel like you're starting, you know, I feel like you're starting and you're willing to explore this. And I don't think before you were like, I think you're just seeing this light. You're just seeing your potential. You're now accepting to, to, to be on this path, you know, like I might not be fully experienced, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Although it's very difficult for me to prioritize, for me to get balance, for me to figure out how to do this, but I have to start with making this choice. And I feel like in the past, you were just not interested. Like, I don't know, like maybe you were hesitant and this person was offering you something here. Like, I feel like the universe, this person, like there was recognition here that you could choose this, but we might have been more focused on the three cups. Like, again, the distractions of things here that weren't so serious, that didn't really matter, that were keeping us 
in that lighter energy, you know, of not having to buckle down or whatever. And so I, I feel like this person kind of came in, why they came in, it's like they offered you love. They, they, they showed you something here and that you like actually had to stop in your tracks, I feel, and consider. It's like, I actually have to stop and consider what do I want to choose for myself? And you really have to look like, am I really fixated on my lifestyle now? Because I do feel as though you're somebody is what is coming through here. Maybe somebody who is free spirited, you know, like you didn't want structure. Like, I feel like maybe you wanted to, you know, be your own sort of independent person, not have to follow some sort of construct or some sort of, um, I don't know, typical way of like get married, have kids, have a family. Like I, I just feel like you like to live your life kind of maybe day by day, you know, like this for you was enough. But what I feel is that it became so much so that I think you got very fixated on your point of view of that's how I live my life, that it became non-freeing. Because I feel at one point it was freeing, you know, it was liberating, it was freeing. You could choose to do whatever you wanted. Like you weren't solidified to anything. Like you weren't stuck to anything. You weren't bound to anything. So it gave you freedom. But now it's like, it's so muddled in some way here because it, was, it wasn't taking aim. So there was nothing, there was no form, there was no structure. And now it's like, I have to re look at myself from a different point of view because I've been seeing myself in one way only, you know, and it, it's been reflecting back to me one way of living and that there's another option here, you know? And so I do feel like this person's made you really think and really made you pull out of a way of thinking, you know, by offering you love or, or, or making you see yourself differently, like how you love yourself, how you give yourself self-love how you could support self, especially too, when it comes to getting grounded and practical things here in your world that would give you stability rather than just, I don't know, like, I think you did things just kind of in the moment here in some way, you know, like, it's like act now, think later type energy is kind of what I'm getting here. And now I think you want to get a little bit more maybe serious or at least go down the path of this, you know, like, explore this some more yeah future now matters i feel i'm seeing lots of stars and it's like your future vision of what you want is now more important than maybe being in the moment of what's happening in front of you the sun and i was getting that from that and it's in reverse it's like yeah like i feel like you weren't fully 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 in a happy energy here and what you were experiencing because what you were engaged with wasn't bringing you full happiness you know full joy and so i feel like maybe there's a lot of ego work we're having to do you know like look at self and i feel like we're now seeing parts of ourself that are being illuminated that we couldn't see before like the greatness within us the light within us because it was really overshadowed by our actions, by our decisions. I feel like your decisions to your habits and your daily routines and how you were f stuck on things that didn't seem very serious or important and kind of maybe frivolous or just all over the place and maybe dabbling in a bunch of different things here might have been good at some point, but I, I feel like now we're getting illuminated as to what do we want, like having more clarity about our future, more clarity about certain aspects of ourself that we want to choose for ourselves. that the decision's there. And I feel like at one point, maybe you didn't feel the decision was there anymore, or that you'd even have a choice, like thinking like, I just got to surrender that the universe is giving me this life, that I don't have a choice to be someone who might create some sort of empire at one point you know so i might as well just accept the fact that that is what it is and put that behind me and i feel you might have put it behind you you know but then i feel like this person coming into your life is like hey like i do have a an ability here that doesn't matter where i left off that i could start to learn how to create this stability how i can learn to be more dependable more solid more secure more reliable build a future for myself you know, and, and I could still be free here. And how do I find the balance between the two, like freedom, independence, living in the moment, but also 
that my future isn't kind of thrown away because I'm still planning for future. So I feel like you've, ha you've been having to find some sort of balance here, but I feel there was a lot of hesitancy and I feel the hesitancy might have not have been just hesitant on this person particularly, although I do feel there might have been hesitancy in seeing what this person was showing you. I feel the hesitancy here was because there was a, a need to learn about self, you know, like still love self, despite maybe you doing things here that on the outside weren't respecting self or like you felt like were destructive of self or did things here that weren't really truly aligned with what you wanted for yourself or the future so you're like is this even something i deserve or i'm worthy of so it made you stop in your tracks like i am worthy you know i am worthy of loving myself and giving myself the healthiness that i deserve and making choices for my body and the people that are around me and being happy for myself you know so i can move forward in my own life i'm not stuck here i'm not stuck here forever so I don't know, it's like a wake up call, I feel here, expanded awareness, a wake up call from this person, you know, but I feel like you're needing to really be patient with yourself and be patient with this process. And maybe this person has shown a level of patience here for you. So you've had to reflect that back to yourself. Like if someone's patient with you, now you learn about patience, you know, and, and maybe this is a pers first person's been very patient or accepted this part of you. So yeah, this is what I have, pile number two. Uh, I hope this resonated for you. If you're drawn to another pile, um, I will see you there. If this sounded more like, you know, um, I don't know, like how you are the reasoning you're kind of coming into this person's life, then you might want to go check out another pile. All right, I will see you soon. Bye. Hello, hello, my gorgeous angels. You guys picked the Shuffle Tarot. I, I was absolutely in love with this deck for the longest time. I love the Shuffle Tarot. We're looking at your person and why it is that this person has been brought into your life. Like, what's the main purpose? What's the reasoning behind this encounter? You know, like, are there many reasons why this person has been brought into your life? One specific reason this person's been introduced to you. So let's take a look. Now, if the energy's crossed, meaning this is why you've been brought into this person's life, then your person's energy could be in another pile. Okay, that happens frequently here. So just take what resonates and sometimes that's the only message we find and sometimes there's no message that's absolutely fine okay so just take what resonates i do ask you use your own intuition what you will see feel or hear throughout this card layout that will determine whether this messaging is for you if you don't want to sit throughout this card layout you can go straight away to your main reading and we will get into your intuitive part so i pulled uh dominoes for this we have six in one although I am feeling one and six. I don't know why I flipped it. We'll see. One and six. Okay. There's already energy coming through, but we're going to lay the cards out before we start to get too into it. 17, nourishment. You're being asked to take time out for self-care. Okay, 17 or eight. We have octopus stinkhorn with reveal, 29, or the number 11. And we have King of Swords energy, which is Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. And we have King of Pentacles. Wow. Virgo, Taurus, Capricorn, two kings showing up. This looks like a crown, a king's crown or a joker crown, a jester, jester crown. Interesting. Okay. And we see the dragonfly here. Dragonfly is all about cutting through illusion so we can see the truth of something. Okay, we have self-love. You realize that love of self is necessary to love another. And we have limitless. See yourself open to receive in the most miraculous ways. The divine can use anything and anyone. Beautiful. We have believe with number 30 or the number three. Look at all these beautiful monarch butterflies. We have what looks like um, a parrot. No, a parakeet. A tropical bird nonetheless a bunch of flowers here and then we have some sort of leopard a toucan hummingbirds monkeys wow this is giving me tropical sort of energy mm -hmm. okay lots of butterflies and then we have spiritual growth beautiful look at that spiritual growth 
and we have surrender to joy. A key to positive change in your life is to let joy in and savor it. Indulge in random acts of smiling during both the hard and easy times. Keep surrendering to more joy. Okay, let's just slide those over a bit so we can get a little bit more space here. We have surrender. I can release my need to control. Okay. And we have surrender. Oh my goodness, you guys, I do not pick these at all. You guys, look at this. Well, we have surrender to joy, surrender and surrender. My cat's scratching, which confirms whatever is coming out here in this reading. So we have surrender. The energy of surrender supports us to let go of illusory control and yield to the flow of love and life. Remember I said cutting through illusions and here we have the joy. Mm -hmm. Believe. Surrender, surrender, surrender. We have 27 and this looks like mountains to me. So number nine. Mountains are all about obstacles, fixed things, surmountable things. We have 46. That could be significant. Number 10 with regeneration. And we have 6-6 six, six with integration, multidimensional healing. Wowzers. Wowzers, wowzers. And then we have the temple path with the number 12 or the number 3 beautiful and then we have the 11th house it says for humanity's sake your hopes and wishes and do it for the future 11th house is is groups it's friends it's social awareness it's also humanitarianism could be about technology hopes and wishes about the future 11th house um is aquarius energy yeah very progressive here with technology okay Aquarius energy and then we have third house with communication 41 or the number five third house third house the mind thinking that's this king of swords communication it's also uh, uh, the house of siblings social activity interests neighbors so we have in groups and, and society again in early education okay so I'll put that there I'm gonna let my cat out I'll be one second all right, my beautiful pile number three. Let me sit with this energy for a little bit um, to see what comes through here. Um, yeah, you can certainly skip ahead to the main reading and I will see what is coming through. Okay, interesting energy, pile three. Now, this, I don't know if you guys were here on the layout, and I still wasn't sure whether it's this way or that way, and to me it makes a difference because I, I'm still kind of figuring it out, and I guess when we do this reading, it'll come clear, but either you're very self-reliant, very, very self-reliant, like very independent, very self-reliant, almost like people are disappointing or... No one can really have your back as you have your own back, you know, like having to take care of self and depend on self and not trust a lot of people and maybe very self-focused and have to create your own sort of things. And either you're learning how to work with others, be open. And my phone is ringing. I'm just going to, I'm so sorry. I'm going to pause this one second. All right, pile three. Sorry about that. I went to use the washroom as well. Interesting. So many interruptions here. Could be pauses here um, in this journey. That could be significant here because I've never had so many pauses. But I feeling, I'm feeling both ways. So I don't know. Maybe there's a group of people here. Maybe you've been so much group think, so much about other people, so much about giving to humanity, so much about what you can offer and do that it's like now time to sort of be focused on self. You know, so why has this person been brought in your world? I feel like it's either flip one scenario or the other. And I feel like there's a reason why this flipped this way throughout the card layout. Like, I feel as though... There's a need for you to trust 
in the universe in regards to allowing who comes into your world to offer whatever they're offering here without feeling the need to, I don't know, like, like you can trust the people coming into your world and you could trust that there's a betterment of group and you could trust that you don't have to be solely relying on self here, you know, but I, I feel like maybe there were certain points where you felt, I don't know, like, like, um, I'm just, I'm just feeling here. Like it was difficult for you to relax, to allow yourself to, enjoy other people uh, i feel like maybe there was a, a lack of faith in other people or but this stems from the inside so it's almost like there's something within you that you weren't seeing about yourself and so therefore we were projecting onto other people like people could not be reliable or counted upon or create something here. I, I feel like there's been a shift here in your perception. Like you're now seeing more to people maybe than you were in the past, you know, like there is something spiritual here in regards to, and not only in this connection, but I feel like how you engage with other people, like you're seeing the spiritual side within yourself. So now you can connect with other people's sort of divinity and, you're seeing it, you know, you're seeing people differently. You're engaging with people differently here. Yeah, you're seeing them differently. So I don't know, like maybe in the past it was easy to write people off or just sort of paint them with one brush. But I feel like there's a dedication here and I don't know if it's shifting more towards being of service to people now so that you can go on a mission to... I don't know, like work with other people or give to other people or like help other people. Or if this is now you recognizing that there is a certain part of you that needs healing that now you're in touch with. And this is why you've been in contact with this person, like that you can heal, that you can come out of certain parts of self that might have seemed like it could never change or that you would never be able to heal or that experience pain in some way here and that you've succumbed to the fact that you just I don't know like that's how life was like you just had to fend for self and that you couldn't heal a certain part of yourself and now it's like wow like I can heal parts of myself and anything is possible and like people all around the world here have significance here in my life and can contribute and can add value to my journey and I can do the same for them. It's like, I don't know, there's a newness here of exploring and engaging with people differently, but also a spiritual aspect to this, which you see the divinity in all things. Yeah, it's like a freedom here of allowing things to be and engage and not having to control it or having to be the one to think I have to depend on myself or things have to go in a certain way in order for there to be order flow and I enjoy it this way more like I enjoy meeting people or being open to what the universe wants to show and acceptance of other people and seeing different ways how people think and opening myself up to their ideas and collaborating or like being open and honest about what my thoughts are so that I could be transparent instead of being guarded or held back or not trusting other people. I think you're seeing, yeah, the divinity in other people here. I think maybe you were moving very fast or had a concept that you had to get through life to build something. And maybe you were quite materialistic or like very one sort of track mind. Like I have to build for myself. I have to, I don't know, get married, have kids, have a job. Da, 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 da. Like there was this, this path I think you were on. And then I feel like there was an identifying that we were missing life. Like we were missing the path or the journey that we were very fixed in our way, that we were very, stubborn in our thoughts that we were very 
yeah, fixed, stubborn, and inflexible, you know, and now it's like, how can I understand people from a different perspective? How can I see the divinity in all things that all people bring new, unique perspectives here? How can I contribute to the whole? How can I enjoy other people here? How can they add to my life? And how can I add to their life? I feel like maybe you were really either closed off or not trusting that you could communicate or collaborate with other people. So I feel that you might have cut them off or just weren't sharing yourself, like your your gifts. I feel like there's a sharing now. Like you're wanting to share yourself with people. You're wanting to share your experiences. You're wanting to experience other people. You're wanting to recognize people and have that recognition back to you in a way that's very perceptive and yeah like very present you know very present i feel it is very healing for you as well so there might have been an understanding that you had here that you had to again like get to a certain goal or do something and that you had to rely on self and it was a heavy feeling, you know, and now it's like, I can unlearn a lot of what I thought I had to be. I can unlearn all these ways about self and I could support myself in regrowing in a way here that supports my own divinity and that can, I don't know, be really connected here with spirits, I feel. But I feel you're really seeing through a lot of things that maybe you made judgments on. Or misconceptions of how you saw people, how you saw yourself, and how the world was supposed to function. And I don't know, like, I just feel like now you're in tune. Now you're, or at least this is the reason why this person has been brought into your life. Like that you're listening, you're actually listening to what people have to say. And, and that your own voice and your own opinion and your own beliefs and your own sort of con contribution is going to have an impact as well you know and, and vice versa yeah it, it's much more balanced i feel here like you're learning about balance how to integrate yourself and receive from other people and give so like i said i don't know for some of you guys you might have just been outputting and it was like i need to remain confined and just kind of you know give to other people here or, or, or sacrifice myself to humanity in some way. And for others of you guys, it's like, how can I get ahead? Like, it's all about me and what I can build and how I can move forward in my life. And, you know, it's kind of cutthroat and every man for themselves kind of thing. And then it, it's now what's happening as a result of knowing this person. It's like, how can I give and how can I receive? How can I be present? How can I see the divinity in myself through others? How can I bring out the best in others by being very authentic being myself you know and and experiencing sort of the the journey of life here because i never know what to expect that anything is possible here and that's fun and it's exciting because i don't know that you were so excited about the journey or so excited about stopping to smell the roses or so excited about the unpredictable things here i think you lived your life very predictable consistent fixed and i don't know necessarily that it was you enjoyed it so much as it was how it was you know because this is how you were established and now it's just like appreciating when things still go sideways like that life is still beautiful that that the universe is still happening and that people are coming into your life for all sorts of reasons and appreciating this and how to work with other people and be very receptive i feel here okay like you're adding this beautiful energy to humanity here by being very open and knowing that the universe is controlling this journey and that you only have a small amount of control here in what you can do and the rest is up to the universe. So it's giving it up to spirituality, to the universe. I feel like some of you guys have found a spiritual awakening through knowing this person. You know, like you're maybe seeing oneness in people or how you're connected to people beyond just seeing yourself as separate, seeing yourself as someone who needs to do sort of your own thing above and beyond other people here. It's like a connectedness to people, humanity, oneness, spirit. 
Yeah, like spirituality as well. So let's pull some tarot to see. This message is quite clear. Okay, so I want to see here with the tarot, a deeper look at pile number three. And why is pile number three's person been brought into pile three's life? What is the main purpose, reasoning behind pile three's person being brought into pile three's life spirit? Clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good of pile three. Please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, pile number three, for allowing me to tap into your energy, the energy around you at this time. I am truly blessed. Thank you so, so much. I certainly appreciate you guys being here today and supporting this channel. It all matters to me. And one more spirit. Why is Pile Three's person been brought into Pile Three's life? This is the reasoning. Clear and concise message here, spirit. Thank you so much. All right. Knight of Wands. Don't read bottom of the deck reverse and Queen Cups. Okay. Let's flip them all over before we start to read. So Queen of Cups is Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces energy. We have the Wheel of Fortune. We have the Ten Pentacles. And we have Eight of Swords in reverse. And we have the Queen of Wands in reverse, Aries, Leo, Sag. And we have Ten Swords. And we have the Fool in reverse. So because this is the Shuffle Tarot, we have different scenes here. We have the Magician hanging out on the Wheel of Fortune. We have the scene of the Ten Swords with the Ten Pentacles. We have the Eight Wands scene. But this is the Eight Swords in reverse. We have the Empress in the Queen of Wands in reverse. And then we have the Ten of Wands scene, but the Ten Swords. And then we have the Hierophant here in reverse with the Fool. So very layered. Let me tap into this for a little bit, okay? So I can see what's going on here. Okay, so I feel like a lot of you guys might have been living for self. Like, I do feel it's it's one in six, okay? I don't know if you guys understand one in six, but it's one in six. It's like going from the individual person to what can I give? What can I give? Like, because we know what we give comes back to us, and it's not just giving so it could come back, but it's like I want to contribute. I feel good when I give. And so I feel like you might have been already established. You might have built something here for self. You know, you might have had a career, built your life. Like, I don't know. There was something about how you lived your life here. But I, I feel like it now became an understanding that you could do more. You could contribute more. You could contribute more to this world, you know. Like humanitarianism is coming through here with the 11th house for humanity's sake. Like, I want to do more. I want to give more. I don't want to just, like be individual, be separate and, and build my empire and then be done. So I feel like there was a part of your life you might've had to release or just detach from material things and what you've built. So I feel like it was a mindset that you might've been in that was very limiting. And it was limiting because your belief was this kind of mine, mine, you know, what I built for me and everyone built their own sort of empire. And now it became, I want to be able to be compassionate and, and, also, I want to explore, you know, what's out there and magician coming through twice. It's like manifest something different in my life, something exciting. Like, I feel like this is about journey, you know, so this person's in your life. So you can ex like they've made you open up a part of yourself that can explore, that can have fun, that can see a part of you manifesting, connecting to heart space, you know, like with the Queen of Cups and this Empress figure showing up here. I feel like it's bringing in a different type of abundance for you to create a sort of abundance here that's outside of your norm like the material things like love unconditional love like actually create certain things that you weren't able to in the past like manifestation with the magician manifestation here with the queen of wands she's the master manifester she can attract what she needs and manifest and here we have the magician sitting on the wheel of fortune this is all about fate and the universe, working with the universe. So I feel like there's a uh, working with the universe to manifest abundance, to manifest things. And I feel like things were blocked here 
you know, and it, it was because of a mindset we had and, and it became burdensome. Like we had to carry this mindset. We had to carry our understanding. We had to carry that we could only manifest a certain capacity, you know, like material things and that was it or create this life and then it's over in some way, you know. So I, I feel like it was painful. And I feel like maybe you've suffered an experience here. I don't know, like an experience of heartache or an experience that has made you see beyond material things, see beyond the limitations of the mind to really connect with people, you know, and, and, and see that you might have been putting your value on, on life, like your ideology and your beliefs in the wrong things. You know, maybe we really valued materialism. Maybe we really re uh, valued what people build for themselves, but didn't see like that beauty could be in spirituality. Beauty can be in the lessons and the journey. Beauty can be in us exploring and learning different things and not being set in our ways and things are ever changing here, you know? So I don't know, maybe you were coasting in life or you weren't creating anything new. Maybe you weren't sure how to manifest something different. Maybe the universe sort of was your oyster. Like, I feel like you were able to be independent, create your own thing. You know, maybe you you felt free at some point, but then it, it hit you in some way. It's like, what am I living for? Like, what really matters in humanity here? What greater purpose can I serve, you know? And so I feel like there's a youthful energy coming through you with this young hierophant, which is learning how to really see what matters, like going through life lessons and journeys and getting enlightened by spirits and spirituality. So you might have found spirituality, you know, so you can manifest different things, greater things in your life, give birth to different things. It's like, it doesn't matter how many cars or homes or work or money you have. It's like, if you don't, you know, birth a family or if you don't give to families or if you don't, I don't know, like come from unconditional heart place to humanity, then what is your contribution? It's not really making you feel good, you know? So I feel like it's, it's woke you up in some way. It made you see through how you were living your life. It made you recognize that p pentacle realm and security and self was just one aspect and to find balance in giving to humanity and to find balance in how you'd live your life and to enjoy the journey, to how to find joy and maybe things that weren't very clear, you know, but there's more to it. There's more depth, there's spirituality, there's lessons, there's soul. They're stopping to smell the garden, to listen to what people have to say. And it might have been something that you just never really stopped to care about or just it didn't mean so much because it wasn't mattering so much in the pentacle realm so i feel like a lot of you guys might have had to detach from the pentacle realm here you know and care about what you're manifesting and get excited about this and i feel this is what this person has done and it's woken your heart up your compassion to humanity is what i feel your compassion and your love for spirituality five swords in the scene of the five cups Five Cups is when we look at the past, so I, I feel like there's something about the past you're not so proud of, maybe how you lived or the decisions you made, or you could see how in the past you were very limited or restricting or not allowing yourself to enjoy life in a certain way, and now it's like, I want to enjoy life. I want to commit myself to something that's spirituality, you know? I feel like you guys have given your life to spirit in some way here, you know? You could see a different dimension here rather than what's in front of you in the 3D. And so I feel this person has opened this up or made you see this to reveal this part of you and this part that you can contribute, that you can give of self in some way here, you know, because I feel you're in a position to give. And I don't know, maybe you can give money, maybe you can give of service, maybe you can, you're already established here, so you can be a provider in some way to humanity, you know, but I, I feel like you see a beauty now, you know, you can give from a compassionate heart space. So yeah, this is why this person has been brought into your life. Pile number three is a very quick message, but that is your message. Nonetheless, I hope this resonated. If this sounds more like why you're put in your person's life, then your person could be in another pile. All right, I will see you soon. Bye. Hello, hello, gorgeous angels. You guys picked the Muse Tarot. Absolutely beautiful. And I have pre-shuffled oracle cards. I've not looked at them and a domino. So what are we doing? We're looking at 
the person on your mind and why has this person been put in your life? Like, what's the main purpose? So what's the significance of this person being introduced to your life? What are the lessons here or the main lesson or many lessons that you're going to learn in regards to this person being put in your life? So as usual, this could be your own energy, why you've been introduced to this person's life. If that's the case, then you might want to flip roles um, or just go check out another pile to see if your person is in another pile. Okay, so use your own intuition, what you will see, feel, or hear throughout this card layout. Um, or you could skip straight away to the main reading. That's going to be up to you. Although I do ask you to use your own intuition, whether this resonates for you. Okay, I'll put the timestamp below, so it'll take you to your reading. Let's get into it. So we have three and four. Three and four. Okay, let's put this here. And we have surrender with the number 12 release and surrender all control and let nature take its course number three okay we have shiitake with nurture number three interesting because we have three three and three here threes are all about growth and relationships it's the initial success we have eight of swords more mushrooms eight swords and we have three of cups another three lots of threes coming through three is also the empress energy three could be the hangman and three could also be the world so divine feminine energy with the empress we're getting taurus and libra energy hangman's pisces okay and we have discernment you are developing the skill to distinguish love from fear and truth from illusion. And we have extraordinary. Look at that beautiful peacock. Beautiful. I love peacocks. Where is my peacock? Do I have it? Oh, it's hidden. It's not here. Okay. There's a wild and impetuous uniqueness to you that deserves to be honored. Wow. How wonderful is that? Beautiful. Take a look. Open tail. Beautiful. And we have differences with 50 or the number five. Five is about conflict and change and rebuilding. We have the two females here. One has eyes open, one has eyes closed. A bunch of butterflies. One is a crown giving me very heavy divine feminine and I'm getting high priestess energy. So empress energy again and high priestess. Very powerful energy here. Pisces, Libra, Taurus. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, very powerful energy I'm feeling from this. Okay, and then we have heaven on earth. Oh my goodness, heaven on earth. Look at these beautiful pink flowers. Beautiful. And then we have surrender to your full power. Oh my gosh, I just got body chills, goosebumps. Surrender to your full power. Extraordinary. Okay differences heaven on earth we have honesty i can't always expect the truth from others but i can expect it from myself interesting you're developing the skill to distinguish love from fear and truth from illusion and we have second chakra the energy of sacral chakra helps us to navigate our lives through our emotions and supports our ability to enjoy the sensual world world okay and then we have the tree 39 or the number 12 coming out again so we have another three another 12 12 12 could be an angel number you might want to look up what 12 12 means lots of threes and we have the tribe number eight eight is all about movement change and attainment the tribe i'm getting empress energy with the mother and the child here the giraffe ascension and we have one one with acknowledge take responsibility okay and we have door to romance three 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 is a master number it's about reproduction again divine feminine energy creativity divine feminine energy coming through humor christ consciousness joy and harmony we see a cage with a, a heart with a key door to romance 
and we have the planet of Neptune. Neptune is the ruling planet for Pisces. We're feeling it with the High Priestess. It says, inspire others with, be prepared to sacrifice for, and yielding to the only way to. Wowzer, wowzer. Jupiter Abundance, 23, for the number five. Hmm. Okie dokie. So let me sit with this energy. It, it is coming through quite uh, powerful, but I'm going to tap into this and you can skip ahead. Pile number four. I don't know if I called you pile three. Sorry if I did, but pile four. Wowzers. This person has been brought into your life for you to come into full glory of who you are here. Okay. Like full reveal to the world. I feel as though there is a beautiful energy from within you that might've been dormant or uh, not revealed to the world here and it's bringing in the divine energy it's bringing in spirit it's bringing in unworldly energy here to earth with this heaven on earth okay so i'm getting empress and high priestess like these are the two most powerful divine feminine energies we can pull intuitive unconditional love i feel like there is something about you here that might have been dormant and there was a need for you to accept self, for you to connect to a certain part of self, to love and embrace all parts of yourself, but specifically your intuitive abilities, your psychic abilities, connect to your emotions. So there was blocks in your, in your lower chakras here when it comes to emotions. So we might have done a lot of healing, okay, how to tap into our emotions and how to, to rid ourselves of any blocks we have here, how to really transform and how to learn about our self-worth and our value and how to embrace our gifts. Okay. Because I feel there's something about you that's very unique that's bringing to this world that I feel isn't your everyday ordinary thing here. Okay. So you're coming into full power here. I feel you're coming to full divine feminine. You're being exposed. I feel or being pull, pushed to expose yourself and your ability, your traits, your beauty to this world. And I, I feel like this is not shying away or not uh, watering yourself down or dimming your light. So I feel like you're having to really take control in a way here that's masculine energy, but also tap into divine feminine energy. Because I feel this is a divine feminine, okay, whether you're born female or not, I feel like your predominant energy is divine feminine. It's like this soft, beautiful, receptive type energy. So we had to connect to healthy emotions, connect to the healthy side of the divine feminine but also know how to be in a, in a healthy divine masculine energy to take responsibility in our life to step forward and to show the world parts of ourself that might have been very dormant okay like without fear without holding ourselves back and i feel like this is bringing in a bunch of abundance here into your life and when i say abundance i feel like this is opening doors to so much here like friendships your soul tribe jobs, creative pursuits, your, um, your ability to connect to your gifts here, spiritual gifts, psychic gifts. So I feel like the abundance is ever coming from the universe here because of knowing this person or having experienced this person in, in a very sort of dreamy way that you couldn't possibly have dreamt up here because I feel like you were locked up in your past world or your life like there was something that was held back here okay and it could have just been because your circumstances weren't allowing it or you just weren't awakened to it so i feel like you've been freed and your heart's been freed so there's a connecting to like unconditional love but really tapping into the emotional space here you know so you can really feel it in a heart space and really understand your emotions and not to be so overled by emotions but at the same time accepting of how you feel and then allowing yourself to understand and, and acknowledge and receive your emotions in a way that's constructive into this world 
so I do feel like you're kind of growing into your own sort of full potential here. And I feel like you're still on this journey. Okay. I feel like you're still on this journey and I feel like you've had to really tap into certain experiences of the past that might've happened like inner child experiences, you know, and things you've had to acknowledge and things you've had to address. And for some of you guys, it could even be mother issues or being brought up and having to see certain parts of ourself that might have caused blocks or might have not allowed us to be comfortable with intimacy and sensuality and reveal ourselves, you know, open. So I feel there's a divine masculine energy coming through with the peacock and this take responsibility. I feel like you've had to maybe get comfortable in, in self-ownership and and doing healthy masculine type things, which is like being in control of your own sort of future fate and sort of take action where you can without maybe, I don't know, like falling back or relying on other people in, in some way. So I feel like there's a lot of ego, like shadow work, I feel here, like seeing your own sort of self as someone who could be beautiful, who could shine, who could still contribute here without being egotistical or prideful in a way that's going to damage you. Like, I feel like there was a need to find balance, a need to show the beauty side of you that you might have been suppressing or denying or shamelessly not wanting to reveal to the world here, feeling maybe like if I do this, it's like showing off, or if I open up, or if I lean into my talents or my skill or something like I'll be judged in some way. So it's best I just kind of not reveal my full true self here in some way. So I feel like you were limited, you were held back in some way, you know, but I feel like this is a journey that you're having to go through here. And I feel like you've had to sacrifice certain parts of self here as well, you know, and have to get very honest with certain parts of self, like, and this, you might have had like an ego death or like uh, having to go through a dark night of soul here where, or having to face certain truths about self and be very honest and about people in our life and how we've been living our life and like say, am I being honest with myself? If I'm being true to myself, like, am I relying on the right types of people, like learning who I can trust and how to trust self and how to make good judgments and how to use my intuition to make decisions, you know, because I don't know that we've used our intuition so much. We might've been very focused on the, the material world to make decisions or other people or just like what was going on in front of us. So now it's like, how do I use my inner knowing to make decisions about people or about decisions for myself? how to navigate forward in my future, you know, because maybe in the past I was very led by my emotional traumas or there were too many blocks in how I'd feel or just emotionally like letting my emotions kind of guide me in some way here. But now it's like, I got to find the part of me that's kind of coming from this intuitive aspect that maybe was silence or that I didn't know how to allow it to guide me because I didn't trust it. And so there's a lot of joy that's coming in here because I feel like you're experiencing people on a different level, but I also feel like you're opening this heart space up in a different way that maybe was very guarded and restricted with this eight swords, like limited. We had beliefs about ourselves that was keeping us from being intimate or allowing people in or like our emotions were telling us one thing. So we, we believed whatever was happening here. And now I feel like we're more, open to express and, and experience people kind of in a different way than we haven't in the past, building healthy relationships, knowing exactly, you know, what is going to be healthy, what's going to grow to stability and what it is I deserve here in some way, because I trust in my intuition. I trust in what I could build here. And that sometimes things take a while here to build into something that's worthy and how do I put forward the energy, the effort towards things that actually matter that are going to grow to healthy and things that I got to let go of that don't really grow to something that I want in my life, you know, like relationships that aren't allowing me to expand, that aren't, I don't know, like just is allowing you to be different. I feel like there's something about you is very different here that might have not have revealed itself with differences in this extraordinary 
you know, like maybe you're very eccentric or there's a way about you that's been suppressed here. So you had to like fit in or I don't know, be a certain way. And now it's like you can bring in this unique perspective to the world, you know, your point of view, your way of being. And I, I feel like you've let go of what people are going to think or how they perceive you. So I think there was a lot of maybe how are people going to see me, perceive me, and how is this going to impact my future? And now it's like, how can I feed this part of me that's different? How can I allow this part of me to be supported, you know, by the people around me and the things around me rather than maybe shutting it down or feeling like I don't belong in some way here? So I do feel for some of you guys, maybe there was a lot of having to please other people. And I just feel as though maybe connections weren't providing you with something more. Like, I feel like it might have been very superficial in some way, or at least it didn't connect to growing something here that I feel would be more solid or aligned with what you wanted. Like, I feel like maybe there were like friendships and connecting on a certain level, but then there's something beyond this, you know, like what can we build for the future? Or like, who can I really rely on here and open up to without feeling judged for being my unique self or for coming out with unique perspectives or this sort of way that I am that maybe wouldn't be accepted by all people in some way here. But I do feel as though there is like getting very grounded, getting very balanced, getting very much in the mindset that I can be accepted by the right type of people if I align myself to the right type of people and not the people who don't support me. You know, so, so I feel like you're aligning yourself with people who are supportive and accepting yourself for the beauty that you have here that no matter how unique and different, it's, it's welcoming and accepting yourself. You might have, yeah, like been leaning on other people to kind of take the, the lead or like tell you what's what or how you have to be in some way. So I feel by knowing this person, it's like, no, I, I can accept myself in, in some way of connecting to the parts of me that I might have been shutting down or embarrassed of or didn't quite understand maybe, you know, because it wasn't fostered or supported for me to really lean into this. Uh, I feel there's a massive transformation in the area of intuition and psychic ability is what I feel here, like lots of transformation here, different aspects of you. And so with Door to Romance, I don't know who this person is, but I feel like maybe for the first time you're feeling love from a different heart space that maybe you haven't been able to before because again it was something that might have connected to your heart from a more of a superficial place with the three cups and the three here you know like i don't know like maybe you always made good friendships and got to a certain point in your relationships but it couldn't connect to the intimacy or the sensuality someplace deeper within you and i feel these doors have been open to your heart space here you know something's been unlocked in the heart space here that might have been hidden away and and might have not have realized that you you had this here because you were having to tap into certain emotions of yours and and not keep up some sort of persona and so i feel like it could have been scary you know to face this and, and to lean into certain parts of yourself and maybe feel like maybe you'd be judged in some way if you just allowed yourself to be but i feel like why this person's been brought into your world is that there's a lot of abundance that's going to come from these gifts, a lot of abundance that's going to come from you being your raw self and allowing yourself just to bring in this sort of aspect to the world that I feel has been missing, which is a unique perspective, a unique way of being. It, it, um, people are going to align to you that can relate with you, you know, but I feel this is a very healing energy. I feel you've had to do a lot of healing. I, I feel like you've had to really support yourself in getting there. Like, lean on yourself to get there. Like, maybe you were waiting for or um, thinking that other people would bring this to you or that you'd get there and never really feeling maybe like you fit in or like it was happening. And now it's like trusting self. Like, I can get to myself here, you know. I can accept all of these parts of me and get to this place where I never thought that I could fully be 
myself. I'm not going to pull these because I don't feel I was ready, but I am going to ask spirits for a clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good of beautiful pile number four. Spirit, for pile number four, the person on their mind, why has this person been brought into pile four's life? Why has this person for pile four, the person on their mind, been brought into pile four's life? What is the same purpose or the reasoning, or the many reasons, the main reason? Why have they been brought into pile four's life spirit? Clear and concise. Please protect me and the viewer as I channel this message. And thank you so much, pile number four, for allowing me to tap into your energy the energy around you at this time. I am truly blessed. Thank you so, so much. Two more spirits. Okay. We have the two of inspiration. And I do believe the inspiration is the, um, the knight of swords. I just want to make sure because I don't really use this deck very often. inspiration page and oh i'm sorry why did i say knight that's very interesting too so that'd be the two of wands two of wands emotions or cups voices are swords materials pentacles yes okay Two of Wands. Let's leave that book there. Sorry. So, Two Wands. Choices. Two Wands is where we have to make a decision here, okay? And sometimes we get very complacent or we get kind of stuck. And then we get put in front of a crossroads where we have to make a decision and we can go explore and so wands are all about inspiration. I, I feel like this person has triggered or inspired you to go down a path maybe that you didn't realize you can even explore or go down in some way here. Okay, so I do feel like it's opened a door for you. And I feel like now I, I feel like there's an excitement about what the future would hold for you. Like, I feel like you are excited about a future. You're excited about where you can sort of lead yourself to what you can manifest for yourself for the future here the hermit self-exploration virgo energy this is all about doing the inner work i do feel like like i said there was some i don't know like ego death or some shadow work that we were doing we're reflecting back on who we are what we want working with spirits knight of materials that's the knight of pentacles Slow and steady wins the race with the Knight of Pentacles because it is a slow moving night. But it, materials here is all about the Pentacle realm. Let's keep flipping them and see what we see. We have the Eight of Materials, more Pentacles. What we contribute to the world here. This is could be the working card, the energy, the effort, the dedication. I feel like your Pentacle world has been very much... Uh, like you're, you're really looking at like how, uh, what's my job like in this world? Like what have I been investing in? Like how, what do I do for a living? Is this something that I want to continue doing for myself? Like, I feel like there's a longer term vision you have of self. You're getting inspired to break out of maybe your everyday, you know, and, and now with this sort of different energy we were getting here it's like extraordinary these gifts this intuition it's like i don't want to just go do a nine to five or continue doing what i've been doing here you know like i feel like you got bored with the usual so i feel like there's introspection in regards to how am i really going to make an impact in my life like where do i see myself in the future here can i make a decision to do something other than what i've been doing like what do i really want for myself we have the two of voices here no Oh my goodness, I suck at reading these cards. Seven of voices. That's seven swords in reverse. Yeah. Seeing through illusions we might have believed, you know, or we might have been telling ourselves something here that now we're being honest about, you know, like 
seeing ourselves maybe for, for the first time as someone who could embrace all parts of us without being under the radar or shying away from letting our, our light shine or certain parts of us that we might have felt we couldn't just be ourselves because it'd be judged, you know, or be seen. So we played small or we weren't allowing people to see this part of ourself. And so we tried to fit in or, or do what socially was acceptable in some way. Like most people just focus on work or show up in this way. So this is kind of what I'm going to do. But now I feel like there's a breaking out and you saying, you know what? Like, I don't care what other people sort of do. I'm not going to conform in any way here or I'm not going to dim my light because that's expected of me like I want to do what I feel is right and make these choices for myself like I actually see a future that I'm inspired to do here that's not just stuck in some typical way that I've been living or expected to live the magician manifestation all the tools here to manifest and bring in as above so below it's like I feel there's something here with this heaven on earth like you're bringing in energies I, I feel like unworldly energies here knowledge information and manifesting certain things here on, on, on earth I really feel like you're creating this unique future for yourself that you wouldn't have otherwise been able to even dream of had you not experienced this experience with this person and it might have took a while to get honest with self, you know, and to really face what you were needing to do. And you might have not have done this yet. It's like, I want to manifest a future here, but I have to deal with how I've been investing my every day, you know. And I do feel it could impact your work or your everyday life or what you're giving to on a practical level here. I feel it's making you really reflect and really become honest with self. You know, what do I want for myself? It, it, I'm not happy just kind of towing the line here the fool yeah like screw it all i want to explore i want to risk everything kind of that i might be working on here in order to go explore something completely different and be free and liberated here the fool is all about you know taking that chance that leap um exploring and not having any plans and i i feel like you want to manifest a new sort of future of what's going to happen here is going to be perfect for me because I'm not controlling it or confined or making things happen. I could just will what I want and, and allow the universe to take me there, you know, like lead me to my happiness. I feel like there's an understanding. There's a, a clarity here in something in the future that's going to be fulfilling for you that you're now wanting to attain in a different way that maybe you weren't seeing in the past that isn't can't be brought in by you know working a nine to five or how everyone else does it it's like something that you have to be very different about in order to attain it it's like i gotta step outside the norms in order to follow this path to bring this happiness to bring what matters to me and most people won't understand it because it's very different but i feel like you're being fed this energy from I don't know from source from your intuition from your psychic abilities it's like you no longer want to just con um, fit into conform into some sort of social norm here and so yeah it's now stepping outside of that so I do feel I want a little bit more because this is very interesting and I feel like I might be missing something spirit Am I missing something for beautiful pile number four? What more do they need to know in regards to why this person has been brought into their life? What am I missing? Anything further they're needing to know here? Clear and concise message for the greatest and highest good. Anything more that's going to provide clarity. Thank you so much, Spirit, for this message. So we have the Hierophant in reverse, and we have Justice, Taurus energy, Libra energy. And we have Queen of Emotions, which is the Queen of Cups in the reverse. Bottom of the deck, Six of Swords in reverse. I don't read bottom of the deck reverse, though. Three of Cups in reverse. Here we had the Three of Cups. Six of Swords. Okay. With the star, stars about our future wishes. 
I'm getting Aquarius from stars. So lifestyle. I feel like there's something very traditional maybe in how you were living your life that I feel has been flipped upside down. You know, how you work, what you engage with, your pentacle realms here. I feel like you're now really looking at like, what do I want to commit to? What is my understanding of myself? And what do I value? You know, like really using your own North Star, your own compass, not someone else's or not what was planted for you, for you to create that world for yourself. So there's balance, justice, and maybe bringing back to you what you feel is going to make you feel feel as though it's something that's aligned with what you want and not what other people might have wanted for you you know like there's an understanding here that i can bring the i'm the only one that can bring balance in my life i'm the only one here that can attain the true happiness here by really evaluating how i'm living my life what i'm valuing and contributing to so i feel like your life's been flipped upside down or at least it, it, it is being flipped upside down and all your values are being re-examined and I do feel as though you've been tapped into your emotions in a way here that you haven't been able to in the past. So there was a block. I'm getting that again. Okay. In the second chakra where I feel like emotions might have been trauma in some way or we were having to really connect with a certain part of our emotions. Maybe we're letting our emotions make a bunch of decisions here for us, but not allowing things to be balanced so that we could make wise decisions here and accept certain parts of ourself that might have been very different okay so I, I feel like you're now moving towards something that is more solid for yourself with the six of inspiration that your life isn't going to be as difficult because now you're not having to tow someone else's line or invest in someone else's sort of vision of what they want for you and so I feel like you might have to shut out a lot of people that weren't aligned, like with the soul tribe and this three of cups in reverse. It's like maybe people you used to relate with and hang out with. It's like I was just kind of doing the motions, but I no longer relate. And maybe it's because you're you're different here with extraordinary. And maybe there's certain parts of you that you've been not showing, you know, and now it's like I want to find my soul people. I want people who will accept me. I'm relearning myself here and I'm allowing myself to kind of be in this fool energy. So I don't even know what to expect of me because I'm kind of relearning myself. And so we don't want to be judged. We don't want to be around people that might have known us in the past here that might have thought that we had to be a certain way, you know. But I feel you're moving out away from these people, moving away from any sort of limitation or social construct or groups of people three of swords in reverse look at the dominoes look at that interesting very similar so well i mean dominoes are dominoes but they're they're black with the white dots three of why did i say swords inspirations wands i'm reading these as swords interesting six swords victory Ego, how we're still seen by people. It's still coming through. People, groups of people, how we're seen, what other people would think of us, you know. And, and so I think we're having to move away and find our soul tribe. And I think you're getting out of this energy, like not surrounding yourself with people who are going to make judgment and limit you and, and not allow you to grow and move forward. Like, I, I feel like you are moving forward, expanding, growing, connecting to authentic parts of yourself by tapping into parts that were restricted and parts of yourself that just felt like they couldn't shine. They couldn't be self. They couldn't expand and grow because of a, a limiting surrounding of people, environment, things you were doing, investing in. And now it's like, I create my own future. You're now connected to the divine. You're now being led by something other than just what's in the 3D. And, and some of it you can't even explain here. And a lot of people might not even understand. It's led by the divine, led by another source here, you know, and maybe there is no answer for it, but you're being honest. You're no longer suppressing certain parts of yourself. I feel like a big part of your, how you work is being impacted. Like you guys might've quit your job or might've really now said, Hey, how do I want to dedicate myself? Where do I want to work? Like, what do I want to commit myself to? I feel like this is a big question, how this person's impacting your world, you know? What do I want to commit to? What do I value? Do I 
wants to keep giving and engaging in a workplace where I don't believe in the same values or thoughts here? Or do I want to invest in something here that's going to support my vision and my mission? Yeah. So this is what I see. Pile number four. I hope this resonated for you guys. I love you very, very much. And I will see you soon. Bye.